Welcome to the Practical Mystic Show, where we bring you simple tips and techniques from around the globe to help practical people deal with extraordinary experiences. And now, your favorite scientist, shaman, and sacred clown, and also the show's host, Janine Bolin. So thank you very much for being at Fun Flamingo Fridays today. I am so excited because today, da, 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 we have a guest speaker, ba, 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 Marianne Johnson. Woo! <laughs> I'm very excited, <laughs> in case you didn't notice. <laughs> I'm excited when I have fellow authors and speakers. And the reason I'm so jazzed about Marianne being with us is she wrote, well, she's written many books, but the ones that we're highlighting today is Becoming a Present Parent. And she talks about how you can connect with your children in five minutes or less. And she also has a workbook. She has online classes. She has newsletters. This woman does it all when it comes to the internet, which is really impressive because she and I are still learning. That's for sure. <laughs> still learning how to handle all this technology. One of the things I wanted to do was share with you a little bit about where Marianne and I met. So I was teaching at George Worth College at the time in Utah, and I had started this uh, online course called the Eight Gates University Cradle to Grave Education. So that's where I had originally set that up. And so rewind the camera back to 2005, and these books were not in existence yet. Marianne was part of the beta readers and the beta group for the very first Red Book, the Cash Cars in College. I had 22 people in a small library, wasn't it, up in um, American Fork, Utah. And Kelly Rogers was the lady who had kind of set it all up for me. I had never taught middle schoolers before in my life. I was terrified. And Marianne was this beautiful grandmotherly presence in the room and she would sit there and kind of give me feedback. It was, it was delightful to have her in the room. Well, anyway, recently we were on the phone together and I was talking to her about the five skills of success and we were describing how in order to be successful at anything in life, whether it's parenting, whether it's a specific career, art, writing, whatever it is you're doing, there's really five skills that are required for that to happen. Uh, the first one is you kind of need to study whatever your art form is. There's a, a format of scholarship required. The second one is to have clarity on what it is you want to learn for yourself. So you don't go running off and get distracted and have what, what people in um, Colorado like to call the shiny orb syndrome. Oh, sparkly, pretty. And they dash off to very sundry things. The third one is you need to have some sort of a discipline so that you can do that. The fourth one is be able to write about what you're learning or what you're doing. And then the fifth one that we were talking about was publish. You need to be able to put what you have learned out there. The publish part isn't necessarily like writing a book or anything. It can be blog posts or a podcast show or something. There is stuff that you have learned through your own scholarship that we always are encouraging women to get out there and share what they know. And one of the fascinating ones, I had to say, oh, it's not five skills, it's six, because I forgot one. And the one I forgot was you have to fail. You, you got to fail. As long as you walk into any any endeavor, knowing that you're going to make mistakes and, and plan for it. My favorite example is when I was getting ready to learn how to sew. And the woman that was teaching me, not my mother, because my mother was left-handed. She was like, she got too frustrated teaching me. So she would pawn me off to these other people. And she, so this woman said, anytime you get ready to sew a project, Janine, just plan on the fact that you're going to rip it out three times, that you're going to take a seam ripper and you're going to have to rip it out three times. And if you have that mindset, you'll never get frustrated with sewing. And I went, oh my gosh. And I have taught that to everyone I've taught to sew. Plan on ripping it out three times. Because if you only rip it out once, you're like, woohoo, I only had to rip this thing out once when I, you know, it was, it's really a, a good attitude uh, to have as you move forward. So Mary Ann is going to talk to us today about a skill set that we were talking about failure. And I was describing to her all these things that I knew. And then she was like, yes, but I find that there's a lot of power in consistency. And I said, oh, would you talk to my people about that? And I would really love it if you would come on and teach us a class. Class. So here's her introduction. Okay. Marianne Johnson is the mother of, get this, seven children. She has been happily married for 46 years, a dying Actually, breed. It's 48 now. Oh, I, oh, my paper says 46. So I that's know, I forgot to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, failure. Fail. Good job. You made a mistake. <laughs> Woohoo. 
the other thing I like is she says here, I have 13 grandchildren, and I know we just recently had a newcomer to the Johnson clan. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So she's up to 14. <laughs> and uh, she's known as the family connection expert. Her book, Becoming a present parent focuses on what she knows best, helping children and parents connect and have better personal management skills. You also get a free chapter when you go to her website, becomingapresentparent.com. Her websites and her homeschoolcoach.com are online communities reaching thousands of people. And she created the Family Connection Mentoring that is well known in the homeschooling community of the Homeschool Coach. So, Welcome for being here, Mary Ann. And when you need the next slide, just say, Janine, click your button or next slide, please. And I'll move it forward for you. Okay, great. Well, I just want to say about that whole fail thing. So I took my first sewing lesson at the Singer Sewing Department before seventh grade and then took sewing every year of school into high school. Never made a single wearable item of clothing. And then decided to make my wedding dress. When I came home with an armful of wedding dress supplies, my mother wept because I couldn't sew. I just couldn't understand it. And I sewed the skirt pieces together. And of course, they didn't fit. And I had to pick them all out with the seam ripper. Yes. And it was Barbizon satin, which left little holes everywhere there was a stitch. And so, you know, I had been at this now. I'm 20 years old. I'm a praying person. I went in prayer and I said, look, I've given this all these years. I've really tried. I just don't understand. But every time the needle pokes through, it makes a hole. Really, I cannot have any more errors. And I want you to know that I picked up my, the instructions and read, started reading them. And it was as if a light bulb had gone on. I understood exactly what they meant. And I'd been working on sewing since before seventh grade. And I didn't pick another thing out. And that, that is the power of consistency. I just kept at the thing until I got the thing. And it took a lot of years. And I do believe that when we are consistent, there's a blessing that comes with that. Somebody upstairs says they really want that. And eventually, they're going to help you get that. And so consistency is a principle of power. It is so powerful. If you can learn to be consistent, and it is a skill, and it's not a one-time skill, you have to become consistent in a thousand things in your life. But the principle of knowing that consistency is a principle and that you need to master it, if you can do that, then all of these thousands of things that you need to be consistent at, you will be able to do it. It's just such a miraculous thing. It doesn't matter whether you're trying to change a system in your household so that things go better, whether you're trying to learn to read a book correctly or change your character. If you're trying to get a new character trait or get rid of an old one, whatever goal you're trying to accomplish, large or small, If you can learn to be consistent, you will be more successful. When you are consistent, and I have done, I have mentored so many moms, and I've seen this over and over again. So what I'm telling you right now, please take it to the bank because it's powerful, is that when you are consistent, it increases not only the success that you have in whatever it is you're trying to do, but your sense of satisfaction. And trust in yourself goes through the roof. So it's just really, it's a powerful principle that we want. So second slide. It's a self-management principle. Now, nobody likes managing themselves. It would just be awesome if we could get up every day and just go willy-nilly through life doing whatever we wanted in the way we wanted whenever we wanted. But you have all experienced in your lives that when you do that, things don't go well. You really have to learn to manage yourself. The better able you are to manage yourself, the more successful you are in whatever it is you're trying to do. And I'll tell you, whether we're talking running a business or running a family, you have to be (laughs) self-managed. When I'm mentoring parents and they're having trouble with their kids, they think we're going to talk about their kids What we always end up talking about is their self-management. And when they start getting that in order, 
it's just amazing how things just smooth right out. So it's really important to be able to keep the promises you make to yourself and to others. And I will tell you this, and we'll talk a little bit more about this, that the promises you make to yourself trump all other promises because you can keep your promises to everyone else. You can be in demand in your church group, in your PTA, in your work. But if in your own private life, you are not keeping the promises that you make to yourself, if you're not being consistent with yourself, there will always be that sense of self-doubt and lack of trust. And the more trust you have in yourself, the more you can keep your promise to yourself, the more successful and satisfied you'll be. And that's just so, there's just no way around it. So there are lots of self-management principles. And the more self-management principles you can get good at, the better things are going to go for you. However, the principle of consistency impacts all the others. It's one of the most important principles for long-term success in our life, our families, and in our relationships, because it's about trust. It's about honesty with ourselves and honesty with other people. It's really a challenging principle to live because what we really want is a silver bullet. So If I want to be humble, man, can you just give me one thing to do and then I can be humble tomorrow and I got that taken care of, right? That's what we all want. But the truth of small steps used consistently over time has been restated and demonstrated so often. I just don't even know why we believe there is such a thing as the silver bullet. And here's the sad thing on classes, books and seminars looking for the silver bullet. I have done this. I still find myself doing this. As I'm working in my business, I need something fixed or done or worked out, and I'm going to go find the thing that's going to make that happen. But the thing that's going to make it happen is me consistently getting up every day, learning what I need to do and implementing. Ah, you just can't get away from it. So we're talking about this um, principle of having to do small things over and over again consistently to have things happen in your life that you want, why would we rather do one big thing? Although it would take a massive effort on our part, if we gave that huge effort, then the work would be done. That's why we love the silver bullet idea, because the principle of consistency is about doing something over and over and over again. It doesn't sound very appetizing, does it? But truly, there is no one and done. And this applies to changing our way of being, managing our families, finding business success, making money, saving money, getting an education, whatever you want to pick, learning how to sew. (laughs) It's all the same. Whenever you hear that a person has achieved an extraordinary goal, what you don't hear is the backstory. What are the things they did every single day? to make that extraordinary goal come to pass. It's ordinary actions. We have a pretty short window today, and I want to make sure we have a lot of time for Q&A. I could give you so much information. I was actually going through doing some housekeeping (laughs) recently, and I couldn't believe how many articles and classes I have taught and written on this one subject. But I want to leave it a lot of time for Q&A, so I'm not going to spend any more time explaining the principle of consistency or convincing you of how important it is in your life. What I want to talk about right now is how you do consistency. What steps are required to learn and practice consistency? So let me just say up front that energetically we're all different as we walk through life and some of us are just naturally consistent and some of us are totally naturally not consistent. (laughs) Let's just agree that that's true. But since consistency is a skill, whether it comes naturally to you or not, you can learn to be more consistent. I am naturally consistent. But can I say that I frequently run up against things that I have to do these steps on because they're things I want a silver bullet for. And so even though I'm naturally a consistent person, Nobody gets away just saying, well, that comes to me naturally. I never have to do anything about it again because I do have to. So if you need to practice consistency, if it doesn't come naturally to you, or if there's an area of your life 
where you're totally inconsistent and consistent everywhere else, then you've got to choose one thing, one thing to practice. Make it small and make it manageable. So here's a list of examples of what I'm talking about. Hang up your pajamas every morning. Put your dirty clothes in the hamper when you take them off. Mow the lawn weekly. Prepare Sunday dinner Saturday night. Have a date night once a week with your spouse. Connect with the child daily. Water the patio plants before 8 a.m. Feed the cat before you go to bed. If you're an entrepreneur like me, Get up and be in your office at 7 (laughs) a.m. That's a toughie. (laughs) Set tomorrow's clothes out the night before if you're always late for work. So we're going to take a little bit of time right now, and I'm going to stop talking. And I want you to pick one thing that you're going to practice for the next 30 days. And I can see you. So I want to see you write something down. Okay, so I don't do this every time that I need to be consistent, but I will tell you that when I do this, I am more successful. That is to write your one thing down in positive terms as if it's already accomplished and post it where you can see it daily. And I would avoid using words like always, because truly, as we're going to talk about in a little bit, there is no always or every time. So let's say that you are going to um, hang up your pajamas every day. Then you would write, I hang up my pajamas daily. It's positive as if it's already happened and you didn't use the word every because nobody's perfect. But it does say that you're doing it daily, right? And then post it on the bathroom mirror, the bedroom wall or above the kitchen sink, someplace where you're going to see it to remind yourself that you're actually practicing something that you have set yourself a goal that you want to accomplish. You just wrote down a promise that you are making to yourself and you want to keep that promise to yourself. Of course, we know it isn't as easy as it sounds, but I know when I have made a real commitment, I feel it in my gut. And I also know when I'm just hoping it's a commitment. And you can certainly tell whether you've committed or you're just hoping you're committed by your results. So, This summer, I was impressed through prayer that I needed to stop worrying so much about business and other things, and I really needed to write. And so I said, okay, I'm going to write every day. Can I tell you that I did not keep that commitment? It was not a commitment. It was a hope. (laughs) It was a maybe. I, the whole summer, I struggled all summer, three months. I did not write most days. I wrote, of course, because that's what I do. I'm a writer, but I didn't do it very well. And so I knew I wasn't committed. And I would return to this idea consistently say, what is keeping you from committing? What is the problem? Why are you not making this promise to yourself? This week, I got up and I came in my office and I wrote. And I knew in that moment, I'd made the commitment. I knew. And once I've committed, it's a done deal. And I will write five days a week from now until I decide I'm done. But you can tell when you've committed and when you're, if you're not committed. You can't say, I've really promised myself. If you have hung up your pajamas two days out of five, you can bet you have not committed. And you need to revisit it. Why am I not actually committing? Why am I not promising myself? Maybe it's that you don't want to be fettered. <laughs> You have to get to the real story. What is in the way? You can't blame your baby waking up or that you have to get kids to school. We're going to talk about that. It's about you. Commitment is always about you. All right. When you're committed, nothing gets in the way. You do what you say. So if you're not doing that, you're not yet committed. You have to believe you can accomplish it. I was a yeller and a rager. I had a lot of anger. I had a lot of things happen to me when I was young. and. Um, I also came from a family and they coped by yelling. And when I finally realized that this was damaging to myself and my family, I wanted to make a change. And I had no resources. It was before computers and uh, everybody I knew yelled. (laughs) And so it was a challenging. It took me 10 years to overcome that particular thing and to make an actual change. And what kept me going through all of that is that I believed... I could. I didn't believe I could because 
I had belief in myself. I'll just be honest with you. I believed I could because I believe in God. And he says with him, all things are possible. And I, I trusted that. He said it was possible. So it had to be. If it took 10 years, it took 10 years. You have to believe that whatever it is you want can be done, that you can hang your pajamas up every day, that you can mow the lawn once a week, that you can fill the dishwasher every night. You have to believe it's possible or you can't commit. It has to be in your control. So, for example, I am committed to making my bed every day, but my husband has significant health issues and he gets up at 10. I get up somewhere between five and seven. How did, and I'm not going to get back in my bedroom to make my bed. So how do I keep that commitment? I make my side. And in the winter, when I'm getting up at five, it's pitch dark. I'm telling you, I'm expert at making my side of the bed in the dark because I don't want to bother my husband. I just make my side. That, it counts. I make my side of the bed. I, I have no control over his side. If I get back in there to, later in the day to make his side, great. But I don't always. But when I go to bed at night, my side is made. So make sure it's something you control. Don't say, my kids' chores are always done by nine in the morning because you cannot control them. You might think you can. You might try. The truth is you can't. Here's what you can control. I gather my kids together every day to do their chores in the morning. You can control that. So just make sure that it's in your control. Next slide. Consistent is not the same as perfect. I teach a wonderful class on change. There are three major steps to change, and the first one looks like failure, and we're not going to go into that, but I'll just tell you, when you're trying to make a change, when you're learning to be consistent in something, the first, at first, it looks like failure. You may only get your pajamas hung up twice in seven days, but next, next week, it might be three in seven days, and the week after that, four, and then five, and then you're doing it every day. Mostly. That's how it is. Consistency is not perfection in anything. And that leads us to the next slide. You must forgive yourself because you will not be perfect. I don't care who you are. I'm super consistent, but I am not perfect. I got over yelling and raging, but every now and again, I kick a chicken or the dog because they make me so mad. Or I might use a really stern Tone of voice with my husband. <laughs> I am not perfect in remaining calm, but I am so much better than I was that it's practically perfect. But I have to forgive myself on those days when I am not in control. You're a student and you're always learning. Even as consistent as you can be, you're always learning. There are new levels to everything you're good at that will help you be even better. And that includes on hanging up your pajamas. I mean, you just have to learn to forgive yourself. If you fall off the wagon and it will happen to you, get back on. If you find that you've gone two weeks and you haven't hung up your pajamas one time, do not sit on the bed and talk about what a lousy person you are. Just say, you know what? Tomorrow I'm doing it. Or you pick them up right then and say, today I'm doing it. And I don't care if it's 10 minutes before it's time for bed. Hang those puppies up. Then take them off the hanger and put them on. Just start again. All right, I have never taught this and I have never written about this before. You are the first group to get it because I have just learned it in the last couple of years. And it's been so hugely powerful. When you're doing things consistently and you're making an effort to be a better person, other people around you are not. I get up at five, six or seven. My husband gets up at 10. My mom who has Alzheimer's that lives with us gets up at 11 or 12. I do a lot in those hours and then they come out of bed and then I got to stop what I'm doing and I have to make lunch. And I bet I don't have to tell you. Resentful. I blame them. What's wrong with them? Why can't they just get up like normal people, right? But when I do that, then every morning I have to fight the fight to be consistent. I have to convince myself to get up. And I get up because I want to. My life runs so fabulously because I get up. I go to bed early and I get up early. It makes a difference in my life. But when I'm blaming and resenting these two people that I love, and I have to fight that fight every day. It makes it harder to be consistent. And here's how you overcome this. Remember, they didn't make the commitment. My husband and my mom have not committed to get up early. It's not their deal. It's my commitment. It's my choice. And you know what? If tomorrow I decided I didn't want to do it, I could stop. 
I could because it's my choice. But I'm just going to tell you this, that there are people all over in your life that are not going to do what you do. They're not going to hang up their pajamas. They're not going to put their dirty clothes in the hamper. I know I live with these people. (laughs) They aren't going to load the dishwasher. They aren't. And I can be mad about it and blame them or not. That's also a choice. And when I choose not to, when I choose to remember that I hang up my pajamas because I want to, and I make my bed because I want to, and I get up early because I want to, and I load the dishwasher because I want to, because it makes my life better, and there's nothing to resent. There's no one to blame. There's no anger. And I don't have to remake these promises to myself over and over and over again. And you will just be more successful if you will get rid of blame and resentment. And the last one, when we don't blame and we don't resent and we forgive ourselves and we remember that consistency is not perfection and we won't quit. But if you, if you wallow in these other places, you'll be tempted to quit. You'll become discouraged. It's in your control. Discouragement is in your control. You have to take responsibility for it. I wish we could talk about this more. When I learned that I'm hundred percent responsible for my responses, my life changed overnight. Is it easy for me to always accept that? No, I have to remind myself. But the truth is, it's in my control how I'm going to respond. So understand that time does not equal failure. Time equals success. It took me 10 years to stop raging. I don't even know how many years it took me to sew. And by the way, I have been singing my whole life and I don't know how to read music. And then all of a sudden, two years ago, I looked at the music. And I understood we're talking 50 years. Why did it take so long? I don't know. Does it matter? No, I just kept singing. I just knew that someday I would understand what those notes meant. And now I do. And now I don't find someone to sit by and choir so I can follow them. People sit by me so they can follow me. Time equals success, not failure. So don't, don't quit and don't get discouraged. In my book, I use the word consistent or consistency 64 times. It's in every single chapter. And that's because it's the principle of power. It gives you power over yourself. Let me say that again. It gives you personal power over yourself. This is how I say what John Maxwell said. Small and simple things done consistently over time bring big results. I say it to myself every single day. Every time I'm annoyed, irritated, mad, (laughs) I remind myself, small and simple things done consistently over time bring big results. I don't care how worthy your goals are, or even if you've broken them down into tiny steps. If you have not learned how to be consistent, you are going to struggle in whatever it is you're trying to do. When you can manage yourself, you have won the hardest battle. The myth of the silver bullet leads us to believe it would be easier to make one grand effort and achieve success, but it isn't easier. You've all experienced it. You read a book, you go to a class, you attend a seminar, and man, oh man, there are 10 things you got to fix. And you run home and you just rip through your family because you are going to fix things. And in a week or two weeks or a month, you're not doing any of them because there's no silver bullet. You take your list to 10 and you say, what on this list matters to me most right now? And you work on that one thing and you do it over and over and over again until you master it. Doing simple things consistently over time is what will ultimately bring you success. Consistency over the long haul is the simpler path. This has been the Practical Mystic Show with Janine Bolin. For show notes, resources, and more, visit the8gates.com. Thanks for listening.